everyone, this is Christine Ballas, and coming up is the chalkboard teaching for the new biblical month that we're entering into. It is the month of Hezron. And Hezron is the month of new beginnings. It's the month of Noah's Ark and the Flood. This is the very month that happened. And what I want to highlight to you guys this year, in the year 5784, remember it's the year of the door, and there was a door on Noah's Ark, right? And that door is Jesus. And so I'm standing here at this little old log cabin, and there's a door frame behind me. And so I just want to give you this visual to come into the Ark of Jesus, enter through the door, be in safety and rest. Enjoy the chalkboard teaching coming up, and blessings in the Ark of Jesus in Ezra. Welcome to the chalkboard teaching for the new biblical month that we are entering into. It is the month of Hezvan. And Hezvan is the eighth month in God's spiritual calendar. And the number eight is connected with new beginnings. So this month of Hezvan follows the month of Tishri, which was the month of beginning and now we have here the month of new beginnings so i said lord how can this be and he said well this is my nature you know my mercies are new every morning and every month and actually if we really want to go back to the beginning where we had peace with god there in eden we have to have a new beginning and here in the month of heshvan there is a beautiful example that shows us this new beginning if you haven't guessed it it is noah's ark and the flood and my name is christine vallis and i am blessed to uncover the lord's prophetic calendar in real time in our lives so thank you so much for tuning in Yes, so this new beginning of the flood actually happened in this month of Hezvan. And so talk about new beginnings. I encourage you guys to read through the account of the flood that's in Genesis chapter 6 through 9. And I know many of us, you know, this is a familiar story, but I really encourage you to read through it. Allow the Lord to give you fresh revelation. And there are so many dates um, in this account account of the flood and we will discover their great significance as they are pointed out in scripture. So let's begin talking about Noah himself. Well, his name means rest. And in Genesis 6, it says that he was a righteous man who walked with God. So how could Noah be righteous before Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, right? Well, he believed God and it was accredited to him onto righteousness just as Abraham believed God. So they had right standing with God because they believe God for the promise of Messiah to come. And so Noah believed God and God gave him a new beginning. And Noah, as a result, had rest and he had true joy in the relationship with the Father. And, you know, the purpose of God's calendar, guys, the purpose of all his creation is to point us to Jesus, to point us to the relationship with him. The Lord calls us to have this new beginning and we must be born again as the scriptures say. So all we have to do is believe upon the Lord Jesus and all things become new. So even in this month of new beginnings, let's receive him if we've never done so before and he will give us a fresh new start. All right, well in Hebrews 11, it goes on to talk about Noah that he was a man of faith and he was warned by God of things not yet seen. And that was, of course, the flood. And so despite the fact that it had never rained in the history of the world, um, because Noah had that revelation of God's love and he believed God, Noah trusted God and just obeyed him automatically. You know, he just went on. He prepared the ark exactly as God told him. And in 2 Peter 
2 5 it says that Noah was a preacher of righteousness and so he couldn't preach righteousness if he didn't have it so he had that righteousness as we talked about earlier and he offered refuge in the ark that he was building but ultimately he was offering refuge in God to others and so he was the preacher of righteousness while he was building the ark but no one accepted his invitation except his own family. So is God calling you to do something that seems crazy in the natural? Well, when you have a fresh revelation of the love of God for you, obedience comes automatically. Galatians 5, 6 says, faith works by love. So we will follow his word and even his warning with boldness because we know that God is for us. So who can be against us? So let's follow Noah's example who preached the word in season and out. Now, as we read through Genesis, we will see that this great flood was an act of righteous judgment. It was an act of mercy on the future of the human race. Because if you look in Genesis 6, it says, Because the thoughts of man were only continually evil, God brought the flood upon the earth. And he, he did this so he could preserve the seed of Messiah. And and he did this through Noah because he was the only righteous man. And so then the new covenant could be established and redemption could come through, through Messiah. So do you see how this flood was truly an act of righteous judgment? And you know, later on we read in Genesis 9 that God promised that he would never again destroy the earth by floodwaters again. And you know, even better than that, now in this new and better covenant, covenant, we see that Jesus, the same Messiah, became a curse for us. All the judgment of God was put on him, and we have now been reconciled to God. He is not mad at us. In fact, that is the good news of the gospel. All of the judgment, everything was put on Jesus. He became a curse so we could become the righteousness of God. That is the good news of the gospel, guys, and that is what brings peace and rest with our Father. Now, the word ark is not the word that was used for the Ark of the Covenant. It is actually the same word that was used for the basket that Moses was laid in as he went down the Nile River there in, in Exodus chapter 2. And so this word that was used for the basket and for the Ark of Noah um, is taba. And it is made up of three Hebrew letters, Tav, Bet, and Hay. And literally, that is a picture that means a house sealed by the Spirit of God. Isn't that awesome? So this picture of Noah's Ark is a picture of our salvation in Jesus, basically in the Ark of Jesus. And you know, in the natural, the Ark was made of gopher wood and it was sealed by applying pitch on the inside and the out. And in the spirit, that wood represents our humanity. And we have been sealed by the pitch, which literally means in Hebrew, the atonement. And that atonement, of course, is the perfect blood of Jesus. So we are sealed by the Holy Spirit, by the atonement of the blood of, of Jesus' blood. And we are preserved in the ark of safety, now in this life and in eternity to come, we are in him and he is in us. And that is life and life abundantly. How awesome is that? How awesome. This ark, guys, is a picture of Jesus himself so we can rest in his salvation. Now, the word highlights certain days as I uh, talked about earlier um, here in this month of, of Heshvan, and so we're going to look at a couple of them. Genesis 7 mentions the 10th day of this month of Heshvan, and it was the day when Noah and his family entered into the ark through the door. And that door, of course, is a picture of Jesus. He calls himself the door in John chapter 10. And so on the 10th day, 
Noah and, and his family entered into the ark, and actually all the animals too. And you know, not just two by two. If you look back in the story, all of the clean animals came in by seven. So I'm telling you, check out the account of the flood. You will gain fresh revelation. And so when they went into the ark on the 10th day of this month, the rains did not actually start happening until seven days later, although the floodgates were open. So we, we read through the story and we see that it was on the 17th day that the flood waters began. And the Lord would remind us here in this month and he would say, hey, remain steady and rest in the ark of Jesus while the world swirls around us. We can be reminded that our salvation is in him. And as we trust in him, this will bring us great rest. So as the story continues in Genesis, we discover that it didn't just rain for 40 days and nights, but the waters of the of the deep burst forth and the water prevailed on the earth guys for a hundred and fifty days and all the flesh on the ground perished and so you may want to check out really encourage this um Henry M. Morris's book called The Genesis Record. It is awesome. It is a commentary that talks about the whole book of Genesis and of course this account of the flood. And I agree with so much of what he brings out. And one of the points he makes that this was not a local flood. Otherwise, an ark of this size um, would not be necessary and Noah and his family and all the animals could have just migrated. And this flood guys was unique in all of world history and I also believe with Henry Morris um, in the fact that um, or the thought that God brought the animals to Noah just as God brought the animals to Adam and perhaps this was the first migration of the animals and I also believe that God caused Noah and his family um, to come under a deep sleep just as God brought Adam under a deep sleep in the garden and that goes for the animals too perhaps this is the first hibernation that the Lord brought upon the animals therefore um, Noah and the animals would remain at rest and the love and safety in the ark in the midst of the destructive floodwaters around them so as we read through the account, Genesis 8 says that God remembered Noah. He remembered his covenant he made with him. I believe at that time too, he woke him up and he sent a wind that, that caused the fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven to stop. And the next date we see is a very interesting one. It is the date when the ark rested. The ark rested on Nisan 17. Now, is that a significant day on God's calendar? Well, the answer is yes. It is the day of first fruits, and that is otherwise known as the day of Jesus's resurrection. So the ark rested on the day that Jesus rose. I think that is awesome. And I believe it underscores that our only rest, guys, is found in a new beginning in Jesus as we rest in his death, burial, and resurrection. That is so awesome. Now the dates continue, and it says that the land became dry on the first day of the month of Tishri. And this date is also significant. We, we just came out of the month of Tishri, so this should be fresh in our memories. The first day of Tishri is the Feast of Trumpets. It is Rosh Hashanah, the day of the physical birth of the earth. So here, the, the land became dried, and it was almost like um, a physical birth of the earth all over again. So talk about new beginnings. The Lord is highlighting these awesome days that line up with this calendar that just bring us into awe and wonder. It is just awesome. Now the dates continue and um, God called Noah out of the ark on the 27th day of this month and Noah exited the ark one year and 10 days after the flood began. And then it was on the 28th day, the very next day, Noah 
actually built something else. <laughs> when he got out of the ark, he built something of his own initiative. And it wasn't his house. He didn't, he didn't get right out of the boat and build a house for him and his family. If you read in scripture, you will see the first thing that Noah built was an altar to the Lord. Isn't that awesome? He did it out of his own initiative. He offered a sacrifice out of an overflow of his relationship with God. And this offering, guys, says was a pleasing aroma to the Lord. And the sense of smell is actually associated here, right here, in this month of Hezvan. And, um, you know, Ephesians 5 says that Jesus' sacrifice of his life was a fragrant offering to God. So how can we be a pleasing aroma to the Lord? You know, um, we don't have to offer animals to be a pleasing sacrifice to the Lord. Jesus took care of all of that. It is finished. But the way we are a pleasing aroma fragrant offering to God is when we offer him our hearts. When we give him our lives, that is what blesses him. It is our relationship, our intimacy with him that is a sweet fragrance to the Lord and brings him great delight. So that is just awesome. As we meditate upon this month, as we are in the ark of Jesus, let's be sure to spend that intimate time with him and in his word. Now, here in the month of Hezvan, it is the first mention of the word covenant. Uh, we see that in Genesis 8 and, 9, 8 and 9. And here's the thing, guys. When God makes a covenant with us, He initiates it. It's His idea. And it's based on His performance, not ours. So in Genesis 8.22, He said that there will always be seed time and harvest. There will always be seasons and there will always be day and night. And Genesis 9 says that he would never again destroy the earth and the living creatures on the earth by floodwaters again. And this is a perpetual covenant, everlasting covenant that he made with us and to all generations that follow. And so this covenant that God makes with us, all of his covenants reveal his true nature. He has a nature of love. He is love itself. He does not have a nature of destruction or fear. He is not a man that he should lie. And he is a God that keeps his word. He keeps his covenant. And this um, covenant keeping God displayed a token of his covenant keeping nature in the rainbow. And we see it here beautifully displayed on the chalkboard. It is the sign of his covenant. And guys, this bow is actually the bow like an archer. It portrays his fame and his might and his strength. And even all the colors are representing the colors of his throne. And this rainbow is the original one and only true rainbow as it displays the true nature of God. He is a God that keeps his word. He is truth and he is love. Now during flood waters, things get uncovered, things get exposed and roots are revealed. And you know, God reveals things so he can heal things. And his word is the cure. Remember in scripture, it says he sends forth his word and it healed them. So we're reminded this month that we are to speak his word over those things, over those areas of our lives that he is uncovering. And he wants us to connect with the most important root of all. That is the root of Jesse, Jesus himself, because he holds all things together in our lives. Now, Hezvan is also known as the month of Messiah. And in this month, there are no appointed times at all. There are no feasts and there are no fasts. And so that is why the Jews call this month the month that is reserved for the Messiah's coming because of this huge vacancy. But as believers in Jesus, we know that he, Jesus, the Messiah, Yeshua, already came. But could this month of Hezvan be the month of his second coming? Well, the gospel actually talks about Christ's return 
like the days of Noah. And um, so, but the scripture also goes on to say that no one knows the day of the hour except the Father. And then again, in 1 Thessalonians 5, it says, but we can know the season. So we are called to be awake, to be aware, and to be sober. So how can, be, how can we be ready for his return, right? Well, we need to be in right standing with him, first of all. And that, again, comes with receiving Jesus. We have that new beginning in him. And we don't have to fear his second coming because his perfect love casts out fear fear. So, you know, as a result, guys, our heart will just be more than ready for his second coming because we will be excited to see the return of our beloved. So that is awesome. He calls us to be ready and to be ready in his love. Now, the word Messiah actually means anointed one. And so anointed means to be set apart and consecrated for a special work, even as anointed with oil. That's what these drops uh, represent, the rain and also the, the oil of an anointing. And so kings and priests were anointed. And we know in scripture it says that Jesus was a king or is a king and priest under the order of Melchizedek. And he was set apart for a special work. Of course, we know that. And Noah was as well. But as believers, we are too. So be encouraged, guys. We are anointed and we are set apart to do the work that God has called us to do. And I love this scripture and encouragement in 2 Corinthians 9, 8 that says, God is able to make all grace abound toward us, having all sufficiency in all things that we may have an abundance for every good work. So we are equipped, guys. We are anointed. We can rise up in boldness. We are a royal priesthood in Him. We are called, anointed, and appointed. And we are reminded that it is not by might, not by power, but by His Spirit, says the Lord. Now, even the Hebrew letter Nun points to Messiah. And we find that here on the chalkboard. And it means... To Messiah. It means to sprout. It also means a son and a seed. And so we're reminded that we all came from Adam, right? We all had our beginning, our physical birth through the seed of Adam. But we are all called to have that spiritual birth, to have that new beginning, that born again experience. And in 1 Peter 1, it says that we are born again, not through a perishable seed of man, but by an incorruptible seed of the word of God, Jesus himself. So we, we can see how everything points to this new beginning, this new life in Messiah Jesus. And it is awesome. Even the tribe associated this month, it just goes on and on. Everything points to Jesus. The tribe is Manasseh. Manasseh was the first son that was born to Joseph. And his main name means that God made me to to forget. And because Joseph had a revelation of God's love for him, that caused him to forget the pain of his past. The Lord um, removed the bitterness in his heart so he could extend forgiveness to his brothers. And it was literally a new beginning for Joseph. And Joseph freely received the love of God, so he freely gave. And we can too, guys, as new creations in Christ, we have the Spirit of God living in us. We have this new born-again life. So as we freely receive God's love and forgiveness, we can give it out. That is awesome. So not only did Joseph extend forgiveness to his family, but he also extended food. And this ties into the month because this month is connected to our digestion. And digestion is simply how the body breaks down food and how it turns 
um, nutrients from the food into energy growth and even helps to repair our bodies. And it's interesting to note that our words are connected with our digestion. And especially here in this decade of 5780, we are reminded that death and life are in the power of our tongues. And Proverbs 8, um, I'm sorry, Proverbs 18.8 says, words of a whisperer are like delicate morsels that we swallow greedily and they go down into the innermost chamber into our bellies. So not only do our words go into our heart, they go into our bellies, whether good or bad. And you know, we begin breaking them down. We start digesting fear and lies and it makes us sick to our stomachs, you know? And you know, sometimes when you hear bad news, you know, it just makes you sick, you can't eat. So guys, we are what we eat and we are what we speak. Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. So let us partake of the word of God. Let us eat the word. His, his words are spirit and life, John 66, 63. So let's chew on his word. Let's meditate on his word. Let's give it time to digest. And as we do, it will transform us from the inside out. Now the heavens declare the glory of the Lord and all the constellations point to Jesus. It's as if the heavens have the gospel on circuit over our head. And this month is connected to the constellation Scorpio. And Scorpio is actually also connected with Messiah because it's connected to the first messianic prophecy in Genesis 3.15. And that is when God cursed the serpent and he said this, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. And he, Jesus, will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Now the reality is, guys, the enemy has already been defeated. Jesus crushed him with a fatal blow to the head. And that's why we say, oh death, where is your sting? And the only power the enemy has is the power that we give him. Because the reality is he fights from a defeated position. He is on the ground. And you know, he doesn't want us to know the truth that we rule from a position of victory. We are standing on high ground, guys. And so we are reminded that we um, fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and we are called to be his hands and feet and we have been given this authority. Even Jesus tells us in Luke 10, 19, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all of the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. But don't rejoice in that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice in that your names are written in the book of life. And so this is awesome. We can rejoice that we have this authority in Christ and the authority over the enemy, but the Lord is saying, true joy, true rejoicing is when you know that your name is written in the book of life, when you have run into the ark of Jesus and then that you have that new beginning in him, in his presence, guys, is fullness of joy. And in closing, guys, I want to share a verse from Hebrews 4 that says, Be diligent to enter into God's rest. So how exactly do we do that? We do it by entering into the love of God. <laughs> when we get a fresh revelation that God loves us, we trust Him, and that brings rest and peace with God. And, you know, perhaps the most powerful um, way to use our faith is just by resting in God. Because when we do, our flesh rests and our mind rests and the Spirit of God manifests in us and through us. And that is powerful. Lord, so we thank you, God. We thank you for the way you love us, for the way you sent Jesus to rescue us from the storms of this life, just as you sent the ark to Noah and his family. Lord, and Jesus triumphed 
over sin, Lord. And as we enter into him, God, we have a new beginning, not only in heaven, but here and now on the earth, life and life abundantly with you. We become new creations all because of your great love for us. So thank you, God. We receive your love and we receive this new beginning. And so we are excited. I am excited, guys, to begin this new month of new beginnings. Let's go forth resting in the awesome love and rest of God, Jesus himself. Blessings, guys, and thanks for listening.